Hi, Rosie. Uh, my name is Vicki Quarles. Hi, Vicki. And today's date is January 27th, 2012. Uh, I'm here interviewing, is it Rosemary? Is uh -huh. your full name? Rosemary okay. Campbell. And we're in Rosemary's home in Longmont, Colorado. And you prefer to be called Rosie, is that right? Yes. Very good. All right. So first, Rosie, uh, tell, tell us where and when you were born. I was born in 1937, January okay. 13th, January in Boulder, th Colorado. Okay. January. That's not true. July 13th. <laughs> well, this is January. Yeah, I can see. <laughs> July 13th, 1937, in Boulder. Okay. Uh, at my grandmother's house, and she lived on Marine Street uh, between 21st and 22nd. Okay. And there's now a big apartment house in that area. Oh, okay. So which grandmother was this? That was my mother's mother. Okay. And there's an interesting story around that. My father played baseball all the time, and okay. it was very, very important to him. And so he had a baseball game that night. So my mother was in labor, and they went to the baseball game. And as soon as they got to the baseball game, my mother had one of her friends take her to my grandma's because she knew that she was in labor, but she didn't want Dad to miss the baseball game. <laughs> and so when the baseball game was over, my dad says, where's Dora? And her friend said, well, she went down to her mother. She was in labor. And by the time he got there, I'd already been born. Oh. And I love baseball. And so the story oh. is that's why I love that's baseball. <laughs> I was almost born at the game. <laughs> right. How funny. Okay. Yeah. How old was your mother when you were born? I think she was 25. Let's see. Let me think about that. She was born in 1913, and I was born in 1937. So she was 24. Okay. And then what, where are you in, how many siblings do you have, did you have, and where were you in the? I have one younger brother. Okay. Yeah. So you're the oldest? Yes. And just one younger brother? Yes. Okay. Yes. Very good. So uh, your grandmother's house, um, was there, how, was there a midwife? How, how was it at the time? You know, I don't know. Do I know, you know the doctor was there, but I don't know if the doctor was there when I was born or if the doctor got there after I was born, because apparently I was born shortly after my mother got there. Okay. So I don't know. Okay. I don't know. I know the doctor was there, but I don't know if he was there for the birthing or not. Sure. Okay. So, um, what, approximately what year did your mother and father come then? to Colorado, or were, or were they born here? My mother came to Colorado, let's see, I think she was 14 or 15 years old, so that would have been 27 or 28. Okay. And my father was born here. Okay. And I think that my father was born in Nederland. I know that his family was living in Nederland when he was born, and I think he was born there. I don't think he was born in the hospital, but I'm not sure about that. Okay. So his, he was born in Colorado, and then where did his family come from? Well, they originally came from uh, Ireland. Okay. And they were in Michigan, and they came out here during the gold rush. Okay. And your dad's name was Neil Coughlin. Yes. And that's N E I L yes. spelling. Yes. And then okay, C O U G H L I N. Right. Okay. Okay. So he was born here, and, and where was your mother born? My mother was born in Cameron, Missouri. Oh, okay. Which is a little ways out of St. Joseph, Missouri. Sure. Okay. So then the farm that was um, sold to the city of Boulder, uh -huh. that property, when did your mother and father then start that or live there? Well, my grandpa, I don't know when mom and dad started living. I guess my dad started living there when grandpa bought the place, and I don't know exactly when that was. It was homesteaded by a family named Crocker. Okay. And somehow or other, the Carlins, who were related to me were related to the Crockers. Okay. And then the Carlin brothers had it for maybe a few years, and they were my paternal grandmother's uncles. Okay. And there were three <laughs> of them. Okay. And then Grandma and Grandpa bought it from them, and I don't know what year that was. I know that that my dad, my grandmother died while they were living there, and she died in 1934. And I think that my father said that they moved there when he was about 13, but I'm not sure. So that would have been like in the late 20s. Okay. Okay. Um, that was a long answer to a short question. <laughs> that's okay. That's, we, that's good to, to okay. get as much as we can. Okay. Um, so, in you, so your father was Neil Coughlin. What was the name of your mother? Her name? Dora Logue. Logue. Uh -huh. Is that L-O-G-U-E? Uh-huh. Okay. Uh, and then your grandparents on both sides, what, do you remember their names? Uh -huh. 
my my paternal grandfather was John Coughlin, and his wife was Lottie Daly. Oh, okay. And then my my uh, paternal grandfather's name was Lawrence Logue, and uh, my maternal was Olive Logue Stewart. Okay, very good. <laughs> And where did where did they come from? Do you know? Um, yeah, I, I can I can give you a little bit of, of information. The Baldwins, my grandmother on my mother's side of the family, her maiden name was Baldwin, and they uh, had been in this country since the Revolutionary War. Wow! They are an embarrassment to us. Really? Because everyone else in our family came from Ireland, oh. and we don't know how they managed. <laughs> <laughs> How they hooked up. How right? they managed to get in there, because the Logues also came from Ireland. Interesting. Okay. Uh -huh. Okay. Yeah. And the Dallies. Okay. And the Coffins. What kind of work, besides farming, now you said mm -hmm. that someone came from, um, for the gold, through the gold rush, right. came here because of the gold rush, so yes. was a, he was a miner? My great-grandparents and my grandfather mined at Caribou, which was silver mining. Okay. But they actually mined at Caribou, and, and they they were there for quite a while, but it seems as though they they got enough money mining to buy the property because they bought the property down the farm where okay. we lived, and then they also bought two ranches up on Gold on uh, Sugarloaf Mountain. Oh, okay. And then they started farming. I think they were probably farmers in the old country in Ireland. Would be my guess. Okay. And had those skills already. Right. And then right. I know that we used to plant potatoes at the ranch up in the mountains. Mm. And there were lots of rules about how you planted potatoes. And we all assumed that those rules probably came from the old country because it was like, you know, you plant <laughs> And we were, of course, little kids and we thought it was all silly. But now when we talk about it, that's what we think it, that it probably was the way they planted potatoes in Ireland. So was that different than how they would do that nowadays? I don't do know, you know because do you I remember? never planted okay. <laughs> so I don't, I don't really know. But there was I don't a remember special, much about it, but there was a special, special way. And we planted okay. them down by the, by the creek, and it was in this black, beautiful, wonderful. I would die to have that kind of soil in my yard. Right. And there was just this one place where we planted potatoes, and we planted them. And then we all went up and dug potatoes, and then everybody had potatoes. And my mother hated them. They were about <laughs> two inches around. <laughs> she, was, she hated them, but anyway, that's okay. what we did. So there, was, so let me understand. So there was a ranch in the mountains that right. was different than your farm. Yes, down in yes. closer to Boulder. Yes. Okay, yes. and that was also your grandfather's. Yes, my great grandfather and my grandfather both had a ranch up there. And then when my great grandfather died, my grandfather inherited the up. We called it wow. the upper ranch and the lower ranch. Okay. Wow. Yeah. So you really spent time in both places, it sounds like. Yes, I did. What, what happened was we had, uh, when Grandpa was alive, and Grandpa died in about 1955 or 54, I think, when Grandpa was alive, we had a hundred head of cattle. Okay. And we had them in the, in the valley in the wintertime, and we took them to the mountains in the summer, and we actually drove them wow. to the mountains. Really? Yeah. And how, do you know how far that was? Approximately? No, I don't know. <laughs> it's through Boulder. We went through yeah. Boulder. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Wow. We went in, um, we drove them down the US 36, the, the highway between Boulder and Lyons. Okay. And then we drove them, like, I think it was probably Linden up to 4th Avenue and across 4th Avenue and up the canyon and up Sugarloaf Mountain. Wow. Yeah. And of course, yeah. back then, what was just dirt roads? Uh -huh. Probably. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> if, if if that right. Oh yeah. Sugarloaf Sugarloaf Mountain Road was was very treacherous and it was just a dirt road. Wow. A hundred head of cattle. Mm -hmm. Okay. Then we had a drought. I think it was it was shortly before Grandpa died, and uh, we sold all but thirty head of the cattle. Okay. And then we after that we didn't take them to the mountains in the summer. Okay. Do you remember what year approximately? I'm that thinking been? it was 1954. Okay. 55, something like that. It was before it was before I was out of high school, and my grandpa died. I was very close to my grandpa. He lived okay. with us until I was 12. Oh, wow. Okay. And he died when I was in high school, So okay. I, and it was right before that, so 53, 54. Okay. Yeah. So if he lived with you um, when you were a child, then was the ranch no longer in no, the family it was there, then? But we, How it, did was, that... it was still there, but we only went up there in the summer. He didn't live up there. Okay. At that point, and I, I don't know before, but what I remember about the building on the ranch is that it was a one-room house. Mm. It was a log cabin. Wow. 
and it had a dirt floor and in it it had two cots that were about two foot wide and a wooden table and two chairs and a, and a cook stove. Is that right? That's what was in there. And wow. so he didn't live up there, no. No, And okay. I don't know, probably some of my older cousins may know, I don't know when they lived up there, if they lived in that or not. I, I have no idea. Okay. And where was your grandmother at this time? My was grandmother had died. Alive? She died in 1934. Wow, okay. Yeah, my father's mother and my mother's father both died in that year. In 1934. Wow, okay. Yeah. And then they both died in the spring, and my parents were married in the fall. Okay, so you didn't know? You never no, knew them? No, I didn't know them. Okay. okay. Uh, and while I'm thinking about it, I forgot to mention the address of the property. Okay. <laughs> because that's important that we get that on, on okay. tape. Um, and just to confirm, the, the main property address was 7713 North 41st Street. Mm -hmm. Okay, and that was the house that... I grew up in. That you grew up in. Right. And who built that house? Do you know? Well, I, th <laughs> I think I know. <laughs> I'm not sure. But I think it was my grandparents. Okay. I'm not sure. Okay. I think so. Okay. There was another older house there. And oh, interestingly enough, the Crockers, when I was in second grade, first grade, one of the Crockers was my school teacher. Oh. And she told me about the house where they lived and the tree that they planted and all that sort of thing. So there was a foundation to an older house. Oh. And when I was a kid, there was actually a house standing there. It was a, a stone house. Wow. Um, okay. Yeah, so there were two houses. Okay. Now, is this house still there, This the one you grew up in? Yes. It still exists? Yes. Okay. Yes. Uh, th and then there was a secondary uh, address, secondary yeah. house that your ex-husband built for exactly. you and him to live in. Exactly. Okay. And that's at 3887 Nimbus Road. Okay. So there were two houses on this same property, basically. Well, when, when we built there, Mom and Dad gave us an acre of land. Okay. And at that point in time, that was in 1962, probably. Okay. At that point in time, the laws were a lot more lenient, and they could just give us an acre of land to build a house on. Okay. Now it would be difficult to do that, but okay. at that point it wasn't. Okay. And, and that house is also still there? Yes. Okay. All right. So have you heard stories about daily life in the old days? I mean, what it was like, or do you remember even your grandparents talking about, you know, laundry, cooking, you know, butchering animals, all the things that... No, I no, I don't. I don't remember my grandparents talking about. I remember okay. my my father and my uncles were uh, very. Um, they were in trouble a lot. They were honorary honorary kids. Okay. And I remember stories that they told us about things that they did. Okay. But I don't. And I I think that it must have been horrible to be their mother. It's what? very funny. <laughs> okay. When you're looking back, but for yeah. her, yeah, like I'm what sure. kinds of things would they? Oh, do you remember? My my. Father and my uncle went to old prep school in Boulder. Okay. And they had these very, very serious assemblies, you know, where all the kids came into the big room and they okay. had, and, and there was this long aisle that went down the middle of the of the chairs mm. and they got those steely marbles mm. <laughs> and they, they asked to go to the bathroom and they went to the back and rolled the marbles down the wrong aisle and of course as they hit the stage they would bing bing. <laughs> And then there's a great story about them setting the, the barn on fire. Oh, my. Because they were smoking oh. in the hayloft in the barn. Not a good idea. No. Yeah. So we, there's lots of those kinds of stories. But as far as, as no, I don't. I, you know, okay. as far as I'm concerned, I lived in the old days. Well, and that's, <laughs> so, so tell me about what you remember growing up and your mother and, and the chores that you, you were responsible for and, and how mm -hmm. all of that was? Well, we lived on a farm, so we all worked pretty much all the time. Right. And uh, we had the, the chore that I hated, I hated the most. We had 500 chickens. 500? Uh-huh. Wow. And we sold eggs, and I got together the eggs every morning, and I hated, I hated those chickens oh. so much I could they would peck me, they would mm -hmm. chase me. <laughs> I hated them. Oh, I bet. Yeah. And then we also had the cattle. We had beef cattle, so we had horses. Okay. I don't I don't remember learning to ride a horse. I would assume that I probably so did it about the same time I learned to walk. I don't sure. know. 
because we rode after the cows. And I, I like that. I liked being out in the field with the cows and the horses okay. and that kind of thing. Sure. Uh, we had workhorses that we, and we cut hay, and we put the hay up with workhorses. And um, they were always fun because their backs were about two foot wide or three mm. foot wide. Mm -hmm. So you could do all sorts of tricks on the workhorses because it was really hard to fall off. <laughs> <laughs> had a lot of room to maneuver, <laughs> and so we did a lot of that kind of thing. Uh, the, these cows got sick; they had anthrax, which mm. was very serious. And we had to not—we couldn't eat the meat, we couldn't sell the meat, we couldn't sell milk, we couldn't do anything. So we had to figure out some way to keep ourselves alive. Hmm. So we bought some pigs. Okay. And one day, my brother and I were home by ourselves, and the pigs got out. Well, we were used to cows, and when cows get out, you know, you get on the horse and you run after them, you yell at them, and they run. Pigs don't do that. Mm -hmm. We had a horrible time. <laughs> <laughs> so we didn't have pigs very long. As soon as the cattle tested safe for anthrax, we were the pigs were gone. Oh. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and I remember butchering. I that was always a, a really. Um, it was very difficult for me mm. because I usually, by the time I got ready to butcher, butcher I had fallen in love mm -hmm. with the animal we were going to butcher, mm. and it was always very, very hard for me. Um, we ate all of the meat. My grandpa used to make brains and scrambled eggs. Mm. Wow! And you know, and we had pickled tongue and oxtail soup. And Nothing and, went to waste. No, right. no, no. Um, and then when we had the pigs, we also butchered pigs. Okay. And uh, and the interesting thing is, I don't eat beef or pork either one anymore. So every time I tell somebody that, they say, "Boy, your father's rolling over in his grave." <laughs> <laughs> Probably. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, we always had a big garden. We didn't have any money. We never had any money. Um, we always had a big garden. So essentially, what we ate was beef and potatoes from the ranch. Mm -hmm and fruit from the garden, and mom canned. We canned okay. a lot in the summer, and I helped can. When we, were hard, when we were doing hay and we had men helping us, I always had to help mom cook because we always had huge meals. Right, which, for the help. Yeah, yeah. yeah, which none of us would eat like that now, sure. particularly not at lunch, I mean. Right. But we did then. Um, and every day, I guess, we had a, a wringer washing machine. We didn't have indoor plumbing. Okay. Uh, so we heated water on the stove, and we had an, a washing machine, but you had to do it by hand because we didn't have electricity. I think I was probably eight when we got electricity. I think it was 1945. Okay. And before that, I remember all of my family loved to read. Mm. So at night, we would sit around the kitchen table mm -hmm. with the big kerosene lamp in the middle and read mm. because there wasn't any place else, you know, where we could have enough light to actually read or play games. Yeah. So, so after dinner, that would right. be what you what did, you exactly. family did in the evening. Exactly, exactly. In, would that be mostly in the winter, or also summer? Yeah, winter because in summer we were usually working. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah, there wasn't much, and and I remember I talked about my dad playing baseball. That if he had a baseball game, mm -hmm. we would nearly kill ourselves so that we could all go to the baseball game because there was a rule at our house that you didn't play until the work was all done. Mm-hmm. And so there were usually a couple times during the summer when we didn't, Dad didn't get to play because we had we still had hay to put up. Sure, that, that so. took priority. Yes, yes. Right. Yes. So who whose job was it to milk the cows? Would that be your brother? Or? No, my dad and my brother both milked. I never learned to milk. My mom okay. would not learn, not let me learn to milk, because she said she had a sister. They they actually worked on a dairy farm for a long time. Oh, okay. And my mother was always the one that took care of the kids. My mother's mother had eight children. And wow. so mom took care of the kids. Okay. And uh, my her, her next younger sister learned to milk. And Aunt Myrtle always hated it. She didn't like to milk and she didn't like to go out to the barn. And so mom said, you're not gonna learn to milk. And so I never learned to milk. Interesting. Even though we only, the most cows we ever had, I think was two. Oh, really? Yeah. We had, my dad had a milk cow. Uh, my children remember making butter because we still had, he still had a milk cow after they were born. Okay. Did, well, that brings me to a question. Did you, were you responsible for making butter? Because I know often that was a girl's job was to churn. Actually, my brother and I both liked to make butter. Okay. So there was always a big fight about who got to Is that right? butter. <laughs> that was one of the things we both loved to do. You know, it was so fascinating <laughs> because we had 
I still have the turn actually. We have this churn, you know, that you'd sit there and churn like right. this, and then you could just sit there and watch it make butter, and it was the most fascinating thing. And, and it's interesting because my brother went on to be a veterinary. Oh, really? And my degree was in, in chemistry. Oh. And so it's like, you know, th there was even that, that science thing going on. They were like, how did that happen? <laughs> and watching it. Interesting, yeah. the process. Yeah. Of, okay. Yeah, to make okay. Butter. Wow. Another thing about my mother's family that I think has, is important to what's happened in our family is that my mother's father and her little brother died on the same day wow. from uh, scarlet fever. Really? And so my grandmother was left with um, seven kids and no husband. And oh in my those gosh. days that was very, very oh, serious. Oh, I can't kind imagine. Of what year was that? That was 1934. Okay. Yeah. And it was, it was mom's baby brother. Mm. He was, I think he was four maybe when he died. Wow. Yeah. So it was... So my grandmother was very resourceful. Mm -hmm. She survived pretty much by, she got some insurance money, and she bought the house on Marine Street in Boulder. Hmm. And she lived there, and when she ran out of money, she sold that house, and she bought a less expensive house hmm. on 4th Street in Boulder, and then she lived there until she ran out of money, and then she bought a house <laughs> down on what was Water Street now. It was Can I mean, it's Canyon Boulevard now. It was okay. Water Street then. Okay. And it was down by the railroad tracks, and it was a very inexpensive house. And then from there, she moved to Jimtown to, we call it the Tar Paper Shack. Mm. It was a little old tarp, and it's still there, and people are still really? living in it. Wow. Yeah. yeah. So that's how she managed to, uh, to make it through those years. And she married a man. Um, and I, I'm not sure when, when she and Matt got married, but she married the man that she was in love with when she was in high school, okay. after my grandpa died. Okay. And his wife died about the same time, and then they married. And, oh, yeah. Nice so the grandfather I remember was my, my step grandpa. Okay. Yeah. Well, in 34, that was really the Depression time, yes. pretty much, was yes. the 30s. Yes. So how, how was that for, for her and your family? Well, you? I think for my dad's family, it was okay because okay. they had the meat and the potatoes and the vegetables and they could eat. And, okay. And that's. And I don't think they had anything, but my family never had very much. Uh, so I don't think it was a big issue for them. I'm not sure about my grandmother's family. They were, they were very, very poor. Mm -hmm. And uh, they lived on a, a dairy ranch and, and milked cows for this man. Mm -hmm. And I don't know. I don't mm -hmm. know how they did. I know they all got there. I know it, I know it affected my mother a lot. I have this wonderful mm. memory of cleaning out closets, and my mother was sitting there, and she was, you know, we were just chatting away, and I had this coat, and it was indeed a beautiful coat. I hadn't worn it for four or five years, so I put it in the pile of stuff to take to Goodwill, mm -hmm. and my mother said, oh, you shouldn't do that. You could make Megan a or Becky a coat out of that, huh. and I said, well, yeah, I could, Mom, but I won't, you know, and she said, oh, okay, but that's, you know, mm. and I didn't, I didn't ever have any store-bought clothes. I was 13 before I got my first store-bought skirt. Really? And I wore it to school, and I slid into first <gasps> base and tore the skirt. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my goodness. It wasn't good. So we should have just forgotten that. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Yeah. I bet your mom wasn't too happy about no, that. No, she was. <laughs> she was not. <laughs> so your mother made all your clothes? Mm -hmm. and, did, mm -hmm. and when did you first learn to sew then? I was seven when I okay. made my first dress, Okay. and I sewed. I, I don't sew very much anymore, okay. but I sewed pretty much all okay. my life. Okay. Yeah. And did your mom make all of you, all of the whole family's clothes? I would assume mm -hmm. she made. Dad well, she and made mine, and she made my brother's. I think she made my dad's shirts. Okay. She didn't make grandpa's shirts because you know when you're older and all these people give you gifts. In fact, when grandpa died, there was a whole drawer full of shirts that he'd never even Is that taken right? the pins out. <laughs> Yeah, but I think she did make some of Daddy's shirts. She made all of her clothes, my clothes, my brother's clothes. Wow. And, and we would, if we got something when we were older, after, after when I was, I was in high school, I guess, and she would buy us pants because mm. to work out in the fields and stuff, and she would buy us jeans because they were the only thing we could afford. Oh, and okay. now it makes me laugh because I go with my granddaughter to buy jeans, and I think, oh, my gosh. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. Now they're so, very expensive, yeah. right? <laughs> Compared Extremely to, expensive. Yeah. Back then, the the jeans, the denim were just 
for working. I mean, yes, it was utilitarian. Exactly, that's use. what you did with them. You wore them to work in. Yeah, and right. when we were doing hay and stuff, we had jeans to wear. Right. right. What about your shoes and, and boots and? Oh my gosh, my grandpa used to repair our shoes. Okay. And that meant instead of having a hole, you have a nail. <laughs> no, is that? <laughs> yeah, that was that was. Yeah, that was not good. <laughs> wow. Yeah, we didn't. And, and you know, and it was interesting because I think that we probably each had one pair of shoes. But my mother would talk about them sharing clothes in her family. Like they would have two skirts and, you know, that was it. Wow. And everybody wore those two skirts. Yeah. Do you remember how many clothes you had? Or I didn't How have many pairs many. of? Mm -mm. I didn't have very many. I remember that mom made my clothes out of feed sacks. You okay. You get feed for the chickens in the pretty, pretty sacks. Okay. And if we were really, really lucky, mom and I would go into the feed store and pick out the sacks that I wanted for a dress. But most of the time they just brought and whatever they brought that was going to be my next dress. Right. <laughs> Whether I liked it or and not. And you were happy to have it. Yes. <laughs> yes. Yeah. What about yeah. winter gear? You know, nowadays we have so much. Yeah, I don't. I remember having mittens, and we had jackets. We it was it was, in my memory. Now I don't know if this is actually true or not. It was much colder, and we had much much more snow. Okay. In the winter time than we have now. I remember. Oh, I'm. So I remember one winter when I was in grade school. I was probably in sixth or seventh grade. That we built an igloo, at the beginning of the summer or the winter. And every time it snowed in the winter, we put more snow on the outside, and it was there until right before school was out. Wow. So it was there all winter long. Wow. And we had a wonderful time because it was kind of like playing king of the mountain. You, everybody wanted to be in the igloo, and if you could get in the igloo and keep everybody else from coming in. <laughs> so I remember that. So in, in the same winter, we had to wait for the school bus. And my brother and I built a, a sled run over the mailbox. So we would, when we went out to wait for the bus, we'd take the sled out there and we'd slide down <laughs> waiting for the bus. And at the school, I went to school, well, I started to school at Bader School, which was at the corner of 41st and Oxford. It was very, very close to our house. Okay. And then in about, when I was in about fifth grade, I believe, they consolidated the schools. And I went to Altona School, which is out on 63rd Street. And uh, it's on a hill. Hmm. And we had a sled run that went down over the hill under the fence. But when you went down, the ash pit was here. And so, do you know what an ash pit is? Mm -hmm. You're looking at me I like... I don't think so. Okay, well, it's where you put the ashes out of the stove, and it was a concrete... Okay. Kind of structure, and you dump the ashes in there so it didn't burn something down or something. Okay. And it was over here, and the and the run went right by the ash pit and under the fence. And we had a lot of accidents. A lot of people hit the ash pit. Didn't have their head down far enough for the fence. The poor teachers. <laughs> <And> staring all. <laughs> yeah, but that was that was that winter. That's what we did. Wow. All winter long, and it was it was snowy all winter. We had snow all of the time. Wow. So it didn't melt like it does now. No, you don't and my dad that. played ice hockey, and they could play ice hockey in almost all of the lakes. Wow. They were frozen hard enough. Okay. And how they decided if they could play was somebody would be chosen, and they'd skate across the lake, and if they didn't fall in, <laughs> they'd fall in. <laughs> things were not quite as people were not quite as cautious as they are now. You know, yeah. they we just did it. Right. So. So, so you took a school bus to school. Right. Was that throughout your school years, or did that change? No, I went. I went. Well, I went to the fifth grade at Bader, where I walked to school, which okay. was just a little ways. Okay. And then I went through eighth grade to Altona School, which is out here on 63rd Street. And then I went to Boulder High School, to okay. Casey Junior High in Boulder High School. Okay. And it was very, um, it was very difficult for me because I was the only person in my class. I think there were five people in my class. The rest of them all went to Longmont to school. Oh, really? Yeah. Okay. And so it was very, well, actually, we were in the, that, that school district, but my parents wanted me to go to Boulder to school because my dad, by that time, was working in Boulder. Okay. And so I would ride to school with him. Okay. And so I went to school in Boulder. Okay. So it was, it was very difficult because I went from a class of five to a, you know, there were 300 kids, and it was tough. And I didn't know. I knew two people. Wow. So it was hard. I was very, very shy then. Okay. I'm not so shy now, but I was <laughs> extremely shy. Then. Okay.
And what, was there a difference between farm kids and town kids? I mean, oh yeah. Okay. How, so how was that <laughs> for you? Um, well, I think the biggest difference is that that town kids um, are not as home at home as much. In other words, my brother and I were pretty much together all the time because there wasn't anybody. Mm -hmm. I mean, we had a lot of cousins and we were th we were with them a lot, but we okay. didn't have neighbors that we played with. Right. You know, we didn't. So we were together all the time. I think the other thing was that that my life had been built around riding horses. Mm -hmm. And their lives had been built around I don't even know what. And I played I played baseball when I lived in the country. And I was so surprised when I went to town to school and I found out that there was a boys' baseball team and the girls were just out of luck. <laughs> and I thought, wow, this doesn't seem right. you know. And I told my dad, I said, I guess I don't get to play baseball anymore. Mm. Yeah, so it, it was a lot different. It was a lot different. It took me... It took me probably a couple of years. I would say I was probably, because I didn't, see I started in ninth grade. Okay. So I went one year to Casey and then I went to Boulder High School. And I think it was probably after my sophomore year before I finally started to feel like I wasn't really weird. Mm-hmm, sure. Yeah. That makes sense. So who who were your friends growing up? Your your brother, obviously, and cousins? I have, I think I have 26 first cousins. Wow, okay. And all of my cousins lived right around here. Well, there were, okay. there were two, I had two uncles who were in the service. Okay. And they were the only two sets of cousins that were, I wasn't with all of the time. I'm still very close to my cousins. We were all together, well, not all of us, but a lot of us were together last summer, and it was a very special time. Oh, very nice. Yeah. And during the war, uh, during the Second World War, my dad did not was not in the service. He was a little bit too old, and he also was on the farm, okay. so he wasn't in the service. But most of my uncles were. Okay. And at that time, we had aunts and cousins living with us off and on all the time because they would be somewhere and then they'd come back, and then they wouldn't have any place to live, and they'd just move in with us. And wow. And it's really interesting because the house we lived in was a little bungalow, two bedroom house. Is that right? And there were already five of us living there. Wow. But people would just move in and out. <laughs> I, I think back on it now, and I think, I don't know how my mother, you know, I don't know how she did it, but whoever needed a place to stay, that's where they came. Wow. And so so your house was two bedrooms. Uh -huh. So you and your brother obviously shared. No, but actually how what happened was. Yes. <laughs> Tell me. <laughs> my mom and dad slept in one bedroom. Okay. My grandpa slept in another bedroom. Okay. And then either my brother or I slept in the dining room, and the other one of us slept in the basement. And the basement was unfinished. It was okay. Yeah, mom, okay. Mom put up, it was really fun, because Mom put up a curtain, but it w and it was made out of feed sacks that were all sewn together. And we had a curtain, and that was, we pulled that across, and that was our bedroom. And okay. Yeah. So not a lot of privacy like we're used to no. nowadays, when everyone no. has their own separate quarters. No. and No. Yeah. Not at all. But you know, and, and I, when my grand, when I talk to my grandkids about growing up, and, and they'll say you were really, really poor, and I will say yes. But you know what? Everybody was really, really poor, because where we lived, we were pretty much like everybody else. Right. That was another thing about when I went to town to school. I, the first time I met people who had a lot more than I had, mm. Mm. and and it was a, that was difficult for me too. I couldn't quite fathom how they had all that stuff and why I didn't have anything. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You weren't used to that, you'd know, been surrounded. No, by I was not, because I, I didn't know anyone before that who actually, I mean, I knew people had a little bit more than I had, but I didn't know people who had a lot. Mm -hmm. And then when I went to town, and I'm sure in today's world they didn't have a lot either, but mm -hmm. at that time I thought they were super, super rich. Right. <laughs> sure. Yeah. Well, it's all relative to mm -hmm. <laughs> compared to what you had. Right. Right. And so growing up, so you had just the two bedrooms, but mm -hmm. no, there was no plumbing, right? You right. mentioned. Right. So you had an outhouse. Yes. Yes. That was, wow. And we all shared the outhouse, too. <laughs> sure. Well, I would think, right. <laughs> yeah. Not a boy's outhouse and a girl's outhouse. No, no. no. Yeah, we had an outhouse. Wow. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And so how was that in the winter? It was cold. It was cold. <laughs> but, you know, I, I think that that when you're doing it, I mean, you don't think about it. That's just the way it is. Right. You know, it's like going camping. Yeah. You just, that's just the way it that's is. That's all you know. Yeah. Did yeah. you, did your family use chamber pots? Yes. Okay. Yes. When it was very cold, we did. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Okay. <laughs>
So mm -hmm. how old were you when you were allowed to start dating? Was that something important? You know, I didn't date. Did I didn't date okay. until I was probably, I think I was, I think I dated a couple times when I was in high school, and then when I got in college, I, I dated quite a bit. Okay, you know? okay. Yeah, so I was older, and I think part of it was because I was so far away. Right. I mean, it was a big, big deal for me to date someone, yeah. And, and I guess I wasn't really... I wasn't ready. Wasn't a, okay. Yeah. So I didn't date, I think I dated a little bit in high school, but not very much. Then when I got in college, I dated okay. quite a bit. So what did, what did young people do? Like when you got to high school, obviously, people were doing other things than what you were used to on the farm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Did, did were there movies or what mm -hmm. kinds of entertainment? Yeah, did? I had been to one movie before I started high school. Mom okay. and Dad had taken us to Mom and Pa Kelly or Kel, whatever that was. Mom and Pa Kettle. There you go, <laughs> Mom and Pa Kettle, and that's the only movie I'd ever been to okay. until I started high school. Okay. And and then I I did go to a few movies. Again, my family didn't have a lot of money, so it wasn't an option that I had a lot. Mm -hmm. I went to all the ba basketball games and football games, and Mom and Dad were very sure. That, that I got to do that. Okay. Um, there were a lot of sleepovers, that kind of thing. I think that, I think that kids now don't have anything to do. Kids then didn't have anything to do either. I think that's been forever. You know, it's just, there just isn't that much for teenagers to do. Interesting. And we did a lot of, we went to the mountains a lot. Okay. Uh, because it was close and it was easy and we could all go up there and mess around and climb trees and stuff like that. And hmm. So went to people's houses. Okay. Yeah. Had parties at people's houses. Okay. Yeah. So at this time, were there, did people have TV yet? Were, was there television? Oh, one family got a TV <laughs> when I was in high school. Okay. Um, and, and it was, it, it was about uh, 12 inches across the screen. <laughs> <laughs> and I think I got to go to their house once to mm. watch television. It was a very, it was a huge wow. deal. Wow. Yeah, to watch TV. And I think I was probably, I think I was probably a sophomore when they got their TV. And I thought, I thought anyone that had a TV was incredibly wealthy. Mm -hmm. I was just in awe of that TV. And I think we all were, you know, I can remember sitting there just like, and I mean, you could barely see it, and there was all this s s snow and all this stuff. <laughs> it was a very big deal. Do you remember what you watched? Do you remember what was mm -hmm. on? No. <laughs> I have no idea. <laughs> my parents, I think my parents got a TV maybe when I was, maybe when I was a senior in high school, my parents got a TV, because we had a TV actually pretty early. Um, and that was because my father liked to watch sports. That's what that was about. <laughs> yeah. So we had a TV pretty early, actually. Yeah. My husband and I didn't get a TV for quite a while after we hmm. were married. But okay. Yeah, my parents had. Did Did you have a radio growing up? Did your oh, family yes. have a radio? Yes, we had a radio. We had a radio in the kitchen, and each of us kids had a radio in our bedroom. Oh. And I can remember laying in my bed listening to the radio. Yeah. Yeah, I, we all had radios. Okay. Yeah. Do you remember what shows were your favorite? No, you know, I can remember, I can barely remember. I was like seven or eight years old when World War II ended. And I can barely remember my parents and my grandpa sitting there listening to the news during the war, you know, because that was every night you listened to the news. And I can remember that, but I was so young that I don't. I remember the end of the war. And the main reason I remember that was that my parents decided they should go to town mm. because everybody was going to be celebrating. And so when we got there, there were so many people. There were mobs of people. Mm. And my brother and I were very frightened. Mm. And I remember Daddy putting me up on his shoulders, and my grandpa put Larry up on his shoulders, and us walking through the crowd. And we were just frightened. And we went home. We didn't stay very long okay. because it was very scary for us because we were too young to really understand you know, what was going on. And I remember when President Roosevelt died, I remember I, I got up in the morning and my mother was sitting at the table crying. Mm. And that was a, I remember that. I probably remember that 
more than the end of the war. Okay. And at the end of the war, of course, my uncles were coming home. And I was going to ask you. that was a very big deal okay. because they had been gone, it seemed like, forever. Okay. Yeah. 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 And one of them was pretty affected by the war. Is that right? Uh-huh. Okay. The other two didn't seem to be, but it was, hmm. it was, uh, yeah, I, I remember that. And I remember listening to the news other times, too, but I... I just have that, I have that picture, and it may not even be from something I remember, maybe something I saw, of President Roosevelt, you know, when he'd do his, whatever he called him, fireside chats mm-hmm. or whatever. Mm-hmm. And, and I think that was a, you know, I, I can remember that voice and, and listening to mm-hmm. it. Yeah. But of course I was too young to really. Sure. I knew things weren't good. <laughs> right. Yeah. We could read the mood of your, right. your parents. I remember the you know, that we didn't have much coffee. I remember Mom put together all these recipes that she made with honey because we had a man who had honeybees on the farm because oh. we had clover and we needed to have it pollinated, so okay. we had a, some honeybee hives. And he paid us by giving us honey. And so Mom learned how to make cakes and cookies oh. and everything with honey hmm. so that we could have our sweets, which we all, it's kind of a joke in our family, we have to have our sweets. <laughs> No potatoes, no meat, doesn't matter, just give me some candy. <laughs> yeah, so that... Yeah. Well, having honey at that time was probably kind of a luxury because so often mm-hmm. people didn't have the sugar and That's that right. just wasn't available. Right. So. And, our, and of course our relatives who lived in town, that was, that was uh, kind of an interesting thing too because we got extra gas coupons because we were on the farm. Now why, would th- why is that? Because we had to run the tractor. Okay, okay. Yeah. So oh. by that time we had a tractor, and so we had, you know, we had extra gas coupons, and so sometimes there was some swapping going on between the people who lived in, the family who lived in town and the family who lived in the country because, you know, we would just, yeah, because I think it was coffee and sugar and gasoline, and I remember my mother being just incensed because one of my, one of my aunts had three cans of coffee. <laughs> And I'm sure we probably Which didn't was have a any. Line. Yeah. Because my grandpa loved coffee. So okay, <laughs> okay. We probably didn't have any coffee. <laughs> yeah, so it was, yeah, I remember, you know, just bits and pieces of mm-hmm, it. Sure. I actually have some of the coupons that you had when you bought oh, things. Wow. Yeah. I don't know where they are. They're in a box downstairs okay. somewhere. But <laughs> Where did yeah. the coupons come from? How were they you know, I given know out? That. Do you know? I don't know that. Okay. I think that they must have been mailed because it was based on how many people were in, in your family and like we got extra ones because we were in the country and we had to have extra gasoline. And mm-hmm. So I think it must, they must have mailed them. I don't know. I don't know that. Okay. Did, know that. did your family have a car or a truck or yes, both? Yes, we or had, we had one have? car. It was a 1934 Chevrolet. Oh, okay. And we drove that car until I was in high school. Hmm. Yeah, I was in high school wow. when we quit driving okay. that car. <laughs> And then Grandpa had a pickup truck, and uh, one of my cousins, I think, still has Grandpa's pickup truck. Oh, wow. But my Grandpa was kind of a wild man. Mm. He was a, he, um, I don't even know how to talk about my Grandpa. He cursed a lot. He he got angry. He was wild and crazy. Mm. And and my mother was very subdued and very, uh, what I want to say, conservative. I would call her conservative person. And so my grandpa and my mother had some problems living together. Okay. And one day, grandpa was taking me to town. And I was, I was probably four. I can remember this just as clear as anything. I was standing up on the seat alongside of grandpa. And somebody pulled out in front of him. And he had to stop. And I hit, smacked my head on the windshield. And I had this big... <laughs> And so Grandpa, you know, he got me sat down because I'm crying and crying, and he pulls off, and he, he starts telling me it's okay and everything, you know, so he gets me all calmed down. He says, now, we can't tell your mother what happened. <laughs> I said, okay, Grandpa. <laughs> so he, he made up some story about how I got this bump on my head, you know. And I know my mother, I know she didn't believe it. I mean, I know she didn't believe it, but she never asked any questions. She just said, oh, okay. I think she probably thought, I probably don't want to know what yeah. happened. Yeah. Yeah. Did you ever tell her? Do you remember I don't if you think ever told I ever her did. I, well, I may have. I may okay. have. Yeah, I don't, I don't remember telling her, but I may have told her. 
Yeah, yeah, she was. And then another thing he used to do that, that just, I just thought it was so cool, because my grandmother's favorite flowers were bluebells, mm. those little wild mm -hmm. bluebell flowers. And so Grandpa would go pick Mom. When Mom got really mad at him about something, he'd go pick her a bouquet of bluebells. And she thought they were weeds. <laughs> <laughs> he would come in with these bluebells, and, and he'd leave Mom say, I don't know why he picks me these weeds. I said, Mom, <laughs> he does it because they were Grandma's favorite flowers. She's going, oh, my God. <laughs> she didn't appreciate no. that. <laughs> the only time that I remember them having any kind of rapport was my father was working in a mine, a silver mine, up left-hand canyon, and the mine caved in. Oh. And it was on the news. It was a very big deal. And it was on the news that the mine had caved in and there were people in the mine. Hmm. And we didn't know whether Daddy was in the mine or not in the mine. Hmm. And Grandpa walked. And Mom just stood in the kitchen and fretted hmm. and cried. And that's the only time I felt like they really had some rapport. And Connected. then my aunt called, and my uncle also worked there. In fact, they lived not very far from the mine. Hmm. And my aunt called and said, Neil is out. She said, I haven't seen Glenn yet. And Glenn was, was my uncle. Your uncle. So then we started worrying about that. But then Daddy came home. And, and that night, I remember Grandpa saying, I don't want you to ever go back to work there again. Really? And my dad saying, how am I going to take care of my family? And Grandpa said, well, I will, I will pay you to take care of the farm. And Daddy said, how much? And he said, $100 a month. <laughs> And now that's like you're wow. like, oh. but that's that that's was a what, lot. That's then. what we lived on. Is that right? Uh huh. So, yeah. And do you remember what year that was, or no. how old you were? I wasn't very old. Okay. I would say I was probably four or five. I wasn't very old. Okay. Yeah, but I remember that. Wow. Yeah. So from then on, your dad did not work. He didn't mine after that. Well, he or? no, he did not go back to the mine. Okay. He, he or Uncle Glenn, neither one ever went back to the mine. They just called the next morning and said, "I is I'm that not right?" Him. Wow. And there were many, many people who did. Yeah, I think I think two men actually lost their life. Oh wow! And, okay. And it was a, it was really difficult. I mean, now you hear about these coal mine, and I think I can't even imagine how mm. people live with that. I I can't. Mm -hmm. um, and he never went back to mining. He did. He did have another job. My mom and dad both eventually went to work in town. My mom, when I was about, um, I think I was thirteen. She started working at a laundry mm. in Boulder, and then she eventually worked at Safeway for 30 years. Oh, really? Uh huh. Oh. And then my dad started carrying hod, and that's a really, really difficult, hard, hard physical labor. What is? The, tell me about that. Hod is what what the guys that it's the mortar that you put in brick houses and, and stone houses. Okay. And the hod carrier mixes the mortar and carries it to the bricklayers. Wow. It's a it's a physically demanding job. Okay. And he did that and farmed for wow. several years. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. And that was common, wasn't it, to to have to work outside oh, yeah. of the home, oh, yeah. outside of farming. Not, a lot of women didn't work. It was right. pretty unusual for women to work. And and mom did not she told me once that she knew that at some point she was gonna have to go to work. But she wanted to be sure that Larry and I were old enough that we could take care of ourselves. And I think I was 13 when Mom went to work. Well, yeah. Okay. And I remember, you know, coming home and fixing dinner, and I suddenly had a lot more chores when I, Mom went to work I because bet. Right. then I had to come home and fix dinner. And, mm -hmm. yeah. and in those days, things were very divided. Men did this and women did that. You know, there wasn't a lot of. My dad could cook um, because he cooked when his when his mother died. Because, okay. because that side of the family, there were four boys and one girl, and the girl was was yet the youngest. Okay. And so Dad cooked then, and so he could cook, but he didn't he didn't particularly like to cook. My son used to love to go down and help Grandpa, mm. and I I would always say, okay, so what's so special about this? And he said one day he said, well, he said, Mom, it's lunch. I said, what do you mean? He said, well, Grandpa makes a soup, and a sandwich, and we have ice cream. And he said, and he likes to dish it all up at front once, so we eat the ice cream before first so it doesn't melt. <laughs> and so that was what was so special about going to grandma. <laughs> and wow. I thought, yeah, I'm sure that's what he did. Mm. Yeah. Do you remember making ice cream? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. but the, was yeah. it the, the 
What type? Yeah, of it, it, originally we had a hand crank ice okay. cream maker, but we later had an ice cream, uh, an electric maker, which I still have, and I think I've used it once. I don't use it that much. Okay. It's it's a lot of work. Yeah. That's what it is. <laughs> yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. So, what other chores in the house were were yours specifically? Oh, I don't ever remember ironing. Okay. And maybe that's why I hate it so much now. <laughs> I don't ever remember doing that. I remember doing almost everything else. I learned to cook at a very young age. Um, I was always in 4-H, mm. so I always was cooking and sewing. We also showed cattle at the fair. Okay. And at that time, the fair was down where Roosevelt Park is now. Mm. And it was, yeah. And also my kids and my grandkids also have done oh, that. Oh, very so, nice. Yeah. Okay. And um, changed beds, swept, mopped. Mm -hmm. We had we had linoleum floors. Okay. And I can remember waxing the floors. Wow. <laughs> Which was not much fun. I bet. Yeah. Was your yeah. mother was she fairly clean? I mean, did she oh, like yeah. things okay, oh, tidy yes. and very much so. <laughs> Yeah, she's she was she was in charge of the house when she was at her own home, before she married Daddy, and everything was always, yes, everything was always perfect. <laughs> yeah. yeah, and I'm 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 pretty, I'm I'm almost obsessive about it, but my mother was obsessive okay. about it. Okay. Okay. <laughs> how do you remember how often sheets were washed or mm -hmm. all of those things in the house? Yeah. Like sheets were always washed once a week. Once a week. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. And remember, we had to heat the water on top of the stove right. and put it in the washing machine. And okay. Yeah. Wow. It was yeah. <laughs> a lot of work. Mm -hmm. Hung the clothes on the line. Mm -hmm. Oh, I did that. Yeah, I always mm -hmm. hung the clothes on the line. And there was a special way to do that. Okay. And if you didn't do it right, you had to go back and do it again. Oh, really? Mm -hmm. What was the, the well, technique? Well, you, you, you had to hang sheets, had to be on the end of the line because they were heavy. Okay. And you never hung the jeans with the underwear. You hung the jeans over <laughs> here and they... <laughs> <laughs> and it was best if you started with the biggest jeans and worked down to the smallest jeans. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, it was, yes. My mother was very picky. Okay. <laughs> what about in the winter? How, how were we still dry hung, in the winter? We still hung them outdoors. Outside. Yeah. And we, ate, we, you know, we had occasionally put them in the house on, on just whatever we could find to hang them on. We didn't right. have wooden racks or anything. Okay. Just, but, on the chair. But mostly they were hung outdoors and, and they would actually do what we would call freeze dry. They would freeze. Okay. And then they'd be dry. Is that yeah. right? Uh -huh. okay. I don't know. I don't know how that works, but Interesting. we did that. Okay. Yeah. Wow. Wow. Yeah. And did you have an old cook stove? How? What was your stove? Yeah, like? we had a cook stove um, when I was when I was younger. Remember, we also got a gas stove at one point in time because we had um, propane gas. Okay. Like I can't tell you at what point in my when we got that, but we did have a cook stove when I was very young. Okay. Yeah. And we used the cook stove, of course, if, if I was up at the ranch with Grandpa, we, but that's all we had up there was a, a sure. wood stove. Okay. How, how often did you, did you bathe? I mean, what was the, in, in well, no showers had, and stuff then, so. Oh, once a week. Okay. Once a week. In a, yeah. did you have a, a tub, tub. Uh -huh. like a steel? Uh-huh, steel tub. Okay. Yeah. And we just put it, yeah. And we washed our hair once a week. Okay. Rinsed our hair with vinegar. I, don't ask me why. Okay. Vinegar and water. <laughs> <laughs> what was the soap did you use? Was it a, like a bar soap? Was there like yeah, shampoo Yeah, it was then? a bar what? soap because actually my husband and I did this for a while after we were married too because if you use bar soap then you can put it in a jar with some water when it gets too small to use and then pretty soon you've got liquid soap and you could use the liquid soap. Yeah. Makes absolute sense. Yeah. 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 Very good. Good. Yeah. Okay. I don't ever remember mom making soap. I don't think she ever did. She didn't. I don't think That so. was something you bought at the store? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah, I don't remember her doing that. So was everything purchased? At, did they have like one place in town, like a, just a general store where you would buy clothes and soap and everything, or were there different places that you would go? Do you remember? No, I don't remember. Okay. I don't know about clothes because we didn't buy clothes. You didn't buy clothes, yeah. yeah. When I got in high school, we bought clothes and I remember that it was it was a very big deal because mother and I went to Denver to buy me clothes. 
Wow. Of course, we didn't buy very many wow. clothes, but right. we always went to Denver, and it was a that's that a long a trip. Big, back then. big. Oh, oh, it was a very long trip in those <laughs> days. Yes, yes. When I was thirteen, my father got cancer on mm. his lip, mm. and he had to go to University Hospital once a week for for uh, radiation treatment. Okay. And that was forever. And mom used wow. to take one of us kids out of school because she couldn't, daddy couldn't drive home mm -hmm. after the treatment, mm -hmm. and mom would have to drive home and. and I think she was terrified, mm -hmm. and she would always, by that time, I was, I was probably 12, 13, and Larry was 10, so we were old enough to be some company, and, mm -hmm. you know, and we realized that this was, this was a serious, like, this was not, he had right. one of the first, he okay. was one of the first patients to have radiation treatment. Wow, okay. So it was, it was a very large thing, and so she took one of us out of school, mm. and it was on Thursday, so every other Thursday one of mm. us was not in school and went to Denver with mom to wow. for the treatment, yeah. Did he eventually recover from that? Yeah, and he finally, he had a hole in his lip for years, it made, mm. you know, they, they did much more extensive stuff than they do now, he had a mm. big hole, mm. and finally he had, um, he had it fixed, he had it repaired. I don't know, I would say probably in the late 70s, early 80s, they did uh, plastic surgery and repaired okay. it. Oh, good. Yeah. But he, went, he was that way for a long time. Wow, okay. How old was your parents when they died? Uh, my dad was 70 and my mom was 75. Wow, okay. Yeah, yeah my, my dad died. He, was, he had had heart trouble for a long time. And he had been in the hospital. He had pneumonia. And he uh, could he, he recovered from the pneumonia, but then he started vomiting, and he couldn't stop vomiting, and he was full of cancer. Mm. And so the doctors decided that the medication he was taking for his heart was what was making him so ill. So we decided to take him off the medication, and he died of heart attack okay. that night. Okay. And my mom fell down the stairs at the farm and really? hit her head. Oh, yeah. how was, sad. Yeah. Tragic. Yeah, she was 75. And she was still living in, in uh -huh, that in the farmhouse. Wow. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Okay, Rosie. A couple things that we didn't get to talk about yet that that I'm very interested in is the property. And first of all, how many acres were there originally that your family's farm? There was a, there were 160 acres originally. Okay. And then it stayed intact until when? I think it was sometime in the 1970s. Mom and Dad sold 80 acres to uh, James Hester, who lived south of us. Okay. And the land that they sold adjoined his farm. Okay. And then um, they had the 80 acres in, I believe it was 1982, they got a urban, or a conservation easement, I couldn't think of the name okay. of it. And, and they, in the process of doing that, they got the PUD designation, which means okay. that you can take all of the land that you have and you can build houses on only part of the land and what's left has to remain agricultural. Okay. So they, we then had, let's see, one, two, three, four lots to sell and the lots varied from being, I think it was two acres to three acres a piece. Okay. And um, that was because mom and dad had no money. Mm -hmm. And you know they were trying to figure out how they were going to retire, mm -hmm. and that was their retirement was to do that, and um, so I think that was approved in 1982, and that was called Coughlin Meadows. Okay. And it was uh, they sold the first place. Well, actually, my my father actually died before they sold the first place. My father died in uh, March of 1983. Mm. And I think that we sold the first place in probably Ju July or August of 1983. And then they were just slowly sold off. And and uh, was an, an interesting procedure for our family because it, it suddenly changed the tenor of the community because it was no longer really rural. Mm -hmm. And a lot of people and and this is not this is not downplaying those people, but a lot of people who think they want to live in the country and have always lived in the city, have no idea what they're taking on. Because everything is more expensive. Utilities are more expensive. Mm. Every time you go somewhere, you have to drive a long ways. 
Uh, and, and it was interesting to watch that because it was the first time in our, in our neighborhood that we'd ever had that kind of phenomena. And all of those people actually moved from the city to the, to the country. And so that was, that was interesting mm. to watch and, mm -hmm. yeah, and negotiate. And the rules are not the same in the country. Right. Just not. I mean, you know, how you how you live with one another is not the same as it is in the town. It's it's a different culture almost. Yes. I mean, if, if, yes. For yes. lack of a better word. Yes. Yeah. Exactly. Okay. Exactly. Do you know what PUD stands for? What that? No nope. public. Okay. Public. I have no idea. Okay. I have no idea what it stands for. Okay. I just know the concept. Is right. To <laughs> put all the houses in one place and leave the rest in agricultural land. Okay. Yeah. So then. That, so then that stayed, some, so parts of the land stayed in agricultural? Yes. Okay, yes. and is it still maintained as that? Yes, as far as I know it is. As far as I know it is. Okay. Yeah. When, we, when we, then in, in um, when we actually sold the land to the city for open space in 2001, I believe it was, uh, we kept the acre where our house was, which was actually already divided from the farm. Okay. And then where, where my, at that point, my daughter and my son-in-law were living in my parents' house. And there was eight acres there that we kept. And then the rest was sold to the city. Okay. And, and I think, you know, the, the original, the, the decision to sell the, the land, the PUD land, was, um, was so mom and dad could retire. That was that. The, the decision to sell the, to the city was uh, not something that I particularly wanted to do. Mm. But I, I was really torn because I could see that if we didn't sell it to the city, there were going to be houses everywhere. Mm. And so it puts you in a real uh, bind in terms of how to move forward. And my brother wanted to sell pretty badly. So uh, I was... I was uh, one of the one who was the only one who thought that maybe we shouldn't sell out of the four of us because my brother's wife and my ex-husband were also okay. included in that decision making. So, okay. Okay. So we sold it to the city, and then later I was glad that we had done that. Okay. Yeah, and I'm still glad we did that. Okay. What What would you have preferred? What was your thinking about what you would have liked? I would have liked to live there for the rest of my life. Okay. <laughs> Yeah, that would have been my preference, okay. but that's not how it turned out. Okay. Yeah. You know, when I when my mother died, and, and we always, you know, she fell down the stairs and she hit her head and it killed her mm. immediately. Mm. And, uh, but she had always said that she wanted to live there until she died. Mm. And so we were like, yes, you know, she did it. Mm -hmm. yeah. and, and I would have liked to have done that too. Okay. But I didn't do it. Yeah. And yeah. and now you sounds like you've come to terms with that. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Okay. I'm, I, yeah. I'm fine with it. Okay. And and it's interesting. One of the things we didn't talk about about my mom and dad's house was that originally my grandma and grandpa lived there. Then my mom and dad lived there. Then my nephew lived there. Mm. Then my son lived there, and then wow. my daughter lived there. Oh my gosh! So actually, our family was in that that house for all of those generations, for nice. three generations. Nice. Well, actually four because my grandkids lived there. Wow. Yeah. And they have great memories of living on the farm. And I'm very, very glad they had that experience. Mm -hmm. Another thing that happens, and, and this has become, as I've gotten older, this has become more and more obvious to me, that people that grow up on the farm are very comfortable with death and dying mm. because they've seen so many animals die and they've seen, they've seen the whole process of how, how there's this big circle. you know. And, and people who live in the city don't know that. And I have, peop I have friends who are my age who still will not talk about what's going to happen when they die. Really? And I really? think, oh my goodness. Wow. Yeah. And my grandchildren are very, you know. Very open about. Stuff dies. Right. You know. Right. They have, they have the ashes of their animals in little vases sitting mm. in this mm -hmm. cabinet. And there's a big discussion about what's going to happen to my ashes. And I think they're just going to put them up there with the rest of them. <laughs> <laughs> You know, this is snow. This is Cleo. This is Bob. This. Is <laughs> what What are your yeah. thoughts on what you would like? Oh, I don't. Or do you care? I, I want what? to be cremated. Okay. But other than that, I don't. I don't really care what happened with my ashes. Okay. Yeah. I had a son who died in 1991. Oh, I'm sorry. And he is buried in Boulder. Okay. And uh, 
I had thought that I would be buried there, hmm. but my ex-husband has a lot there too, and I think I won't be buried there. Okay. Uh, unless I'm buried in, in the grave with Sean, if I'm cremated, that would be all right with me, but I don't really care. But I just think it's interesting that, that I see that I see that all the time, and it always it always surprises me that people can go through life and, and think that they aren't going to die. You know, like and I think it's because they're not they're they haven't seen that so much. They haven't, you know, they haven't experienced that so much. Sort of been sheltered from yes. from those experiences. Yes, exactly. And when you live in the country, I mean, you, you see animals die. You see you see death all of the time, and it's just right part of life. Sure. Do you remember when your your grandparents died and, and how death was handled in your family or at that time? How how was yeah. that? Well, when my grandpa died, I was I was uh, I was in high school, and yeah, I think it, it, death was not handled very openly. Uh, grandpa had been sick for a long time. I know now that he had Alzheimer's. Oh. That that wasn't what you called it then, and that mm -hmm. wasn't what it was, but. We used to have to go find him. He was living up on, on Sugarloaf Mountain at that point with his okay. second wife. And she would call and say, John's gone, and we'd all race up the mountain and look for him until we found him. Oh. And he was, you know, that was what was wrong with him. And when he died, I had always been, I thought, the closest to Grandpa. Mm. But when we got ready to go to, and, we, and Mom and Dad didn't talk about what was going to happen when we got to the funeral, we got to my aunt and uncle's. And suddenly it became clear that I was not going to ride in the family car. I was going to have to take care of my little cousins, and I was pissed. <laughs> <laughs> and it was not pretty because I was. This was your grandpa that you loved. You very grandpa. right, right. But of course, I did it, and I got through it. But I've always remembered that. Mm. And my older cousin, I said to her, I said, "Well, you're older than me. Why did you have to take?" Well, her parents had not even told her that grandpa had died. Oh because her husband was in the service and they were afraid that she wouldn't be able to come home and it would it would be awful for her. So they didn't tell her until much later. Mm -hmm. Oh my goodness. Mm. You know, and, and so it was very different. Mm -hmm. Now my grandma was, was quite a bit older. She was uh, she died I think in nineteen she was eighty six years old. I think she died like in nineteen seventy something. Okay. So it was like twenty years later. Okay. So it was much different then. All of the family was here and I remember it was much different, and and we we uh, I think I think because she was older, and we she had been in a nursing home. And mm -hmm. I think it wasn't you know, it was much different. Sure. But I do remember when she died. Yes. Okay. What are, what about animal deaths growing up? What do you remember about? Oh yeah. Yeah, I know you mentioned that was very hard for you when you're when the animals would be butchered. And, and when I when I actually did 4-H, my dad never let me have a steer. Because if you had a steer, you had to sell it, and then you knew that it was going to be butchered. Mm -hmm. So I always had a heifer. I always had breeding stock because then I, I, I remember animals dying. I remember saying, "We're going to butcher this calf, so don't get too attached to it." And that never worked for me because I was attached to all of the animals. Yeah. And then I remember my granddaughter. In fact, that's because my grandson and I were talking about this today. My granddaughter had a horse when we were out on the farm, and. We had two other horses, and one of them was, was uh, pretty, what shall I say, feisty. And they were all in the corral, and, and Megan's horse got kicked, mm. and it broke its leg and, mm. and put it down. Mm. And it was very, very traumatic for the kids. Um, they were like, Jimmy was so young that he doesn't remember. Megan was probably five or six. That was, that was extremely traumatic. Mm -hmm. um, we had a fire and the cow got burned and we had to put the cow oh. down. I remember sitting in the, <laughs> in the corral with this cow's head in my lap oh. waiting for her to die. And I, you know, I could just, I just remember those things mm. and I just think, you know, you're just so intimate with all of that when you're living on a farm. It just happens. Mm -hmm. Cats got run over, dogs got run over. What about wild animals? Was there... Was that an issue there? You know, it wasn't much when, when I was growing up, but when we were living on the farm not very long ago, it became, we had bear, and, and we had a, a man who lived down the road from us that had beehives, and the bear came in one night and turned over all the beehives. We had choke cherries, and the berries on the bottom of the bush were always gone, and I think, oh, that's interesting. Well, it was, you know, the bears, they, they, 
reach up as far as I could reach, and then I got the berries that were on the very top. <laughs> Didn't get the ones down on the bottom. <laughs> and the deer ate the flowers, and yeah. I don't remember it so much when I was a lot. I remember hmm. coons, hmm. because we had a lot of corn in the garden, and of course we had, yeah. <laughs> we were always trying to keep the coons out of corn. <laughs> So was there, was your basement um, the, the cellar where you would store your food no, in the winter? Did well, you have well, a separate? We did, we, did start, we did start canned food. We did start canned food in the basement, but, but fresh food, we, we had a root cellar. Okay, That's okay. Let's see, what were we, what were we <laughs> before our, we thought our battery died? <laughs> before the death of the, we were talking about death of animals. Yes, yeah, that's yeah. What we're right. And the wild animals, yeah. Okay. Yeah. I don't ever remember any problems. We had a lot of coyotes. Okay. I remember my grandpa shot a coyote when mm. I was trying mm. to get in the chicken house, and we had mm. a coyote skin that we had for a long time. It was very nice to lay on the coyote skin because, you know, he made a rug out of it. Really? Coyote, yeah. Okay. Okay. And then my uncle who lived up Left Hand Canyon shot a bear out of the tree. He did he thought it was a coon and he went out in the middle of the night and he shot and it started falling down the tree and he thought, I don't <gasps> believe that's a coon. Oh. <laughs> it was a bear. And the wow. kids and he drug it up on the side of the mountain before he skinned it. Oh. And the kids would go up and play on the dead bear. <laughs> <laughs> and I would think, Oh my gosh and I thought, Oh well, you know, what the heck? <laughs> And then he skinned that out too, and, and I think one of my cousins still has the bear skin. Wow. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. All of my aunts and uncles lived, most of them lived in the mountains. Okay. And my brother and I were at a great disadvantage because they always had a contest about who could get the most wood ticks in a season. <laughs> and Larry and I didn't live in the mountains, so we compete. <laughs> yeah. yeah, because that was a big thing, you know, they were always taking ticks off every night. Yeah. Wow. So I had cousins in, in Gold Hill and Rowena and Jimtown and Up Left Hand Canyon and uh, all, over. all over. Wow, wow. Yeah. Okay. Had a lot of contact with aunts and uncles and cousins. And I was the oldest grandchild in my mother's family. Okay. So I was pretty rotten. <laughs> in fact, my cousins would say I'm still pretty rotten. <laughs> But I was the oldest, so I got a lot of attention. <laughs> my aunt and uncle had a daughter not too long before I was born, but she didn't live. Mm. So, okay. Yeah. So I was the oldest. I have double cousins, which is kind of unusual because my mother's brother married my father's sister. M okay. Mother's brother married your father's sister. sister. Interesting. Uh -huh. okay. Uh -huh. okay. So I have double cousins who look. Exactly like my father, much more like my father than my brother. I either one do. Wow. Yeah, and and we're we're pretty close because you know it's a it's a special kind of thing. Mm -hmm. When my cousins got together this summer, it started out being one side of the family and ended up being all of us, because when we were growing up, we were all together all the time, because it was usually at my parents' house and the Coughlins came and the Lugs came and we were all mm -hmm. together. So mm -hmm. they were all we included everybody this okay. summer. So it was a very special time for me. One of my cousins is moving, moving to the Philippines. Oh, wow. And that was the reason for us oh, to get together okay. before they moved. So hmm. it was fun. Very good. Interesting. What else would you like to, I don't anything know. else I you think can think of? I think that's pretty much it. Okay. I think, I think that families were, extended families were closer then than they are now. It seemed to me like, I mean, when I think about my friends from that age, they all had big extended families too. I think people move around so much now that, mm. that it's harder to have a large extended family. Uh, because in those days, people pretty much, not everybody, but a lot of people stayed right where they were, where they were born. Mm -hmm. You know, it was a very big deal when my mother's family moved out here from Missouri, mm -hmm. because that was a huge move. So, sure. You know, what a, do you remember ever having a telephone? Did your family get oh, a telephone? Oh yeah, we had a telephone, when? and there were twelve people. All, we all had. The, okay. We were all on the same line, and <laughs> we had. We could hear. I think we could hear six rings. Our ring was one, 
It was very nice because once it rang one, you didn't have to pay attention to it. Except that the other thing that women did who were home all the time is listen to what somebody else was talking. <laughs> so, you know, you would be talking away and then and then pretty soon you'd know that all the neighbors knew. You could hear them pick up the phone and hang up and everything when you were talking. It was very interesting. I think I was probably, I, I think it was probably when I was sometime in high school, we got, we only had two people. And that was huge, huge thing. We had the, the phone, you know, with the dial and, mm -hmm. you know. I don't ever remember having a phone on the wall, but I remember the dial phone and, yeah. How, how did you communicate with your family then up in the mountains when you we were a child? Them. Okay, so we they had a phone. Yeah, okay. they had phones Everybody too. had a phone then. Okay. Yeah, it, it was more difficult then to call because, you know, it would be busy a lot. Mm -hmm. Because you weren't talking about one phone, you were talking about 12. <laughs> 12 people. <laughs> But I don't think people talked on the phone as much then either. Yeah, they were too busy and working. It was a huge deal to call long distance. Oh, okay. And my cousins and I were laughing about that now because, you know, we don't talk to each other very often. And I said, you know, it's something that's in our mind that it's a very big deal to call California. Now I talk to my cousin who lives in Lafayette all the time, but I don't talk to my friend who lives in Washington all the time because. Even though it doesn't cost me anything, <laughs> it's just something that's lodged there. That that's, mm -hmm. and it was a very big deal when somebody who was away called, and when my uncles were in the service, it was a huge deal when one of them called. Yeah, I have two uncles who made a career of the service, hmm. and uh, hmm. actually I have two uncles and two cousins. Who, hmm. Yeah. So, so what do you, what do you think we could learn? in our present day from from your experience of growing up on a farm, you know, so many years ago. What is it that we're missing now in our society, if anything? I think we're missing, um, I think we're missing the chance to just be quiet, to be still, to um, not have all the bedlam all the time. Because I, I remember life then as being uh, pretty quiet. There wasn't a lot of rushing around. And um, if you listen to the radio, you listen to the radio. You didn't have the radio on, just have some noise. You know, you sat down and listened to the radio. Um, or you sat down and watched TV. You didn't have it on just because you needed to have noise. I think the noise is... is the thing I think the the total absence of quiet is the thing that is the most most bothersome to me anyway. And I'm a very I'm a very quiet, alone person. So that may be totally different for everyone else, but for me that's what I think people now don't have is just quiet. And just time to do nothing. I can remember when it was real hot in the summertime, I can remember my mother and I going out and laying in the grass under the trees and just laying there all afternoon, doing nothing. <laughs> and it was just wonderful. You know, and now if somebody did that, they'd be locked up. <laughs> It'd be totally crazy to do that. <laughs> Are there anything, is there anything else that you would like to share before we, before we wrap up? And we have, again, more tape if we... I don't think so. I, I don't think so. Okay. I, don't, I think that's mostly what I remember. I remember the horses and how much I love the horses. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah I'd like to. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Well, th thank you so much, Rosie. Yeah, this has fun. been really interesting. And there's, fun. I'm sure, much more that we could talk about. <laughs> I don't know. In the future, I think. <laughs> So thank you for sharing oh, thank all of you. that. Thank you for asking me. That was fun. Good.